back to my channel my name is Alex Tinsley and if you didn't know that before then you should totally change that and subscribe to my channel this is gonna kind of be like a journey of my story with my migraines and I just want to film those videos sit down and be honest because I know that I'm not the only person who goes through these things and whether you might be dealing with migraines anxiety depression any of those types of illnesses um, that you can't fully see a lot of the time people are like how could you like be feeling bad you look fine and it's like well it's all internal you know it's really hard for people to understand if they don't know what it's like or if they haven't gone through something like that so I hope that somebody finds this video helpful that's always the purpose of all of my videos um, I'm gonna be discussing kind of my journey with migraines and a lot that has happened within the past few months so let's begin so when I was a freshman in college about halfway through my first year I remember this very specifically I was sitting um, in a United States history class felt really dizzy I felt nauseous I felt really shaky I was totally panicking the way that the class was formatted was like it was like a lecture hall I was thankfully sitting by the door that day but I was so anxious because I was like oh my gosh if I get up everyone's gonna look at me and like I just not good at dealing with that yeah i just got up i went to the bathroom and i just felt horrible i texted my best friend who was on campus and after she met up with me we went to go to the dining hall i could barely eat anything i felt so bad thankfully she stayed the night with me which made everything so much better because if i would have been alone i don't know what i would have done i genuinely thought i was getting the flu a lot of my roommates were getting sick i thought that i was getting sick and i was super anxious about that because i hate getting the flu i cannot stand throwing up like i hate that feeling so I wanted to go home i wanted to drive home that night it was a thursday but i had class in the morning and i ended up staying the night i got up for my class at 7 30 because it was an 8 a.m went to the dining hall still felt really bad and just decided to drive home because i just could not bear the thought of sitting through another class i cannot remember a hundred percent if that weekend that i was home i went to go see my doctor or if it was like after that i finally went to go see my doctor and he thought that i had vertigo so i was doing all of these things for vertigo i was um getting blood work done to make sure everything was good with like my thyroid and just all over in general and everything came back normal so then when we realized that it wasn't vertigo he had recommended i go see an ent so he put in a request for that said that they were gonna call i never called but then he called me back and he said that he talked to them and they said that what's going on with me seems more suitable for a neurologist which scared the absolute crap out of me. I was like, I have a brain tumor. I'm dying. Yeah. So, finally get in to see the neurologist. And I was so scared. You know, it's I've never had a doctor until now that I've felt like wants what's best for me, genuinely cares. Um somebody that I feel comfortable with. So I go in and the second I meet this neurologist and her nurse, her nurse was absolutely amazing. Um, shout out to you, Angie. But I felt so like comforted. I felt like I am in the hands of somebody who is gonna help me and figure out what's going on. You know, throughout my whole like journey with like the vertigo and the ENT, like I was like, this is just not it. Like there's something else going on and migraines were in the back of my head but I just couldn't put a finger on it and I mean I've never had them so I mean like how are you supposed to know what those are if you've never had them but so I go and she's just my doctor is absolutely amazing one of the best human beings that I've ever met by far on this planet just so genuinely kind her personality is so funny like she is so good at making jokes so good at making you feel good so good at like just I don't know just everything I love her and there's just not enough good things that I can say about her to be honest after several months of me seeing her we finally got a medication to work I tried like sumatriptan I tried a bunch of the different triptans in that whole family and eventually we started taking amitriptyline which we started at the low dose and worked our way up just for reference I probably had a migraine every single day all day for about six months before something actually helped which um, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody so I started you know doing amitriptyline get took a long time but it eventually did work I think a lot of people think that a migraine is just a bad headache and that just simply isn't it and there's different types of migraines you can have chronic migraines I have chronic migraines finally felt like I had my life back on track and I was super excited and you know they would come here and there and I started getting Toradol shots and they inject it and in, you can do it in your arm I get it in my lower back because that's where it seems to be more effective because it works 
into your system a lot more than if you got it in your arm. So I was getting those um, every few months here and there and that was helping. And then fast forward to about, I want to say like March of 2020, I started having some interesting things happen and it started off with me feeling like I couldn't breathe. I had a really fast heart rate. I felt like it was really hard to swallow and the first thought that came to my mind was that I had COVID, got tested for COVID, came back negative and so I was like oh okay eventually that passed and things got a little bit better and then my heart rate was just off the chart it was this probably happened about June July and August I was dizzy felt like I was gonna fall over every time I got up I was nauseous I just felt so bad I went to my neurologist I only see her every six weeks so there's a lot that can happen in six weeks and you know it always seems to be like oh I'm great when I'm there two days later I'm a mess. I had to go to the ER three times and the first time I was walking my dog in the morning with my mom and I had never felt so bad. I thought I was going to pass out at any second. So she was like, you know, I think that you should go to the ER. Just go there and see what they, what they can do. And so that's what we did. I went to the ER. My heart rate was really high, but you know, they just thought like, oh, you're probably just having anxiety, stuff like that, and kind of, we're like, there's really not much that we can do, so we're just gonna send you back. I go home, everything's fine, like, a few more days go by. Then I finally have an appointment with my neurologist. They take my heart rate. My heart rate is off the chart, really high. I take my temperature. I have a fever. They all freak out, send me back to the ER right away, which is, like, across the street, but I didn't understand what was going on until they put me in a room by myself and every single time that somebody came in and out of the door they had to wear like a full-on hazmat suit and I finally put the pieces together and they thought that I had COVID again and I was like y'all I don't have COVID like I I just I don't have it obviously like there's nothing wrong with what they did they were doing what they were supposed to um I was just frustrated because I knew deep down that I didn't have it and like I know that like you can't be 100% sure but like I knew that I didn't have it and I have a bunch of videos of when all of this was going on I vlogged a lot of it they came in and gave me a chest x-ray then I had um a nurse come in and she drew my blood <laughs> Then they made me get tested for COVID again, and they did two tests, one which came back within an hour, the other one was like the more like long one, which took about like a couple days. The one that comes back in an hour, they said, if it comes back positive, we know that you have it. If it comes back negative, there's still a chance that you have it, but we're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah, so then they did a bunch of EKGs, and you can tell in the video, I have all these little stickers all over me where they attached the wires and stuff. And then here's like a little clip of me explaining everything that was going on. So I've had a EKG done. I've had my my blood drawn and I'm getting fluids in right now as you can see. Um, I had a chest x-ray and um, they tested me for COVID twice because there's like two different tests that we can do I guess. I also took a urine test. I had to use this weird little toilet which was really awkward. There's somebody in the room. Um, but I mean it is what it is. So, yeah, that happened. They gave me my results back. It was negative again, and, and I was like, all right. Um, so then I was scheduled again for neurology, and I think, like, a day before my appointment, I was at home, I was all alone, and we have the oxygen reader as well as your heart rate monitor. I put it on my finger because I felt like my heart was racing, and it's at 120, which is, like, what it had been at and it just went up and up and up and I was watching it and I was like is this wrong so I kept taking off but I could feel it in my chest my heart was pounding so I called the neurologist office I tell the lady on the phone what was going on I think it got to about 170 and keep in mind I was sitting down that is not okay I thought I was about to have a heart attack so I'm on the phone with my neurologist's office and she's like go to the ER right now so that's what I did. Again, they didn't know what was going on. Um, they gave me a shot to calm myself down because they couldn't, like, stop my heart rate from being so high. And it just made me, like, ooh, <laughs> not fun. They did blood. They did EKG. They did, um chest x-ray again they did basically everything that they had done the previous few times and everything again came back normal 
at that point um i go see my neurologist the next day and she says that she's taking me off of amitriptyline because she thinks that it's a side effect we start decreasing my amitriptyline did over a period of about i think six weeks i decide to go get a migraine infusion which is also known as a migraine cocktail where they infuse you with like magnesium a bunch of vitamins um, they give you a couple of different shots, they give you Tylenol, they give you Benadryl, they give you these things that are supposed to help. I don't know if it's pr to prevent or to stop a migraine, but either way, I was like, it can only be beneficial to me. So that happens at the cancer center. I think I have one video, maybe, so I'll insert that. Ooh, that video just like gives me... I had such a bad experience with that. I thought for sure that it was going to help me. I think it was the Benadryl that they put in that made me feel insane and it's supposed to make you go to sleep. My body doesn't react well to that. My brain doesn't shut off and it was fighting and it was fighting to stay awake. It was fighting to just be alert because I like to be in control. I was probably sitting in that chair for four hours. My neighbor, thankfully, was so kind enough to take me, drive me um sit there with me i was so anxious i was like everything was just a blur i had to go to the bathroom i ran into the wall i had like a whole thing because it was like getting infused in me with my iv i was a mess i hated it it was probably one of the scariest and worst feelings ever and you know i was like you know like it is what it is like it's not gonna last forever and it's gonna help me um it didn't help me really at all <laughs> to be honest it genuinely made things worse a few days later i had my neurology appointment i was put on this new drug called topiramate or also topamax i believe it is because i was taken off of amitriptyline so we were going a new route one week into taking that i lost my vision I could not see anything. The only thing that I could see is if it was literally this close to my face. The, that was the only thing that was in focus. Everything else, couldn't read anything, couldn't see anything. I could see color. Like, I could, I could see. It's just, it was a complete blur. I felt like I was on portrait mode. I, yet again, thought that I had a brain tumor and that I was dying. <laughs> right away that morning, I called my neurologist, told her what was going on, and, you know, she was a little bit stumped. She was like, you know, it could be the medication, but it could have been something with my optical nerve. It could have been something else that we were missing. So she was like, I would like you to schedule an appointment with your primary to get your eyes checked. My primary didn't have any appointments so I got sent somewhere else that was honestly such a big blessing in disguise because the person I got sent to was a walk-in clinic they have many different doctors throughout the week but I had the absolute sweetest assistant and she like took me back she like did all my vitals she asked me what was going on you know she was so kind and just the type of person that you want when you're feeling like crap and she was like all right let's try to do like a little vision test real quick brings me into like the office to like do a vision test with like the whole thing on the wall and i was like i literally cannot read anything i can't even see what you look like everything is so blurry she was like oh my gosh like i didn't realize it was so bad so then she brings me back in the room the nurse practitioner comes in nicest lady i've ever met as well i have never been so blessed <laughs> to have such a good experience with people but she was so sweet. I mean, I couldn't even see what she looked like, but I just, you know, I, she was like doing peripheral vision tests, making sure that my eyes are all good. She's like, everything's good, but I don't know why this is going on. It's like, we're going to send you next door immediately, which thankfully was an eye doctor place. So they do that. I go in, we try doing an eye test again. She's like, how many fingers am I holding up? And I was like, I don't know. I'm guessing at this point, you know, I got to make humor out of it. Like I couldn't see a thing. They take pictures of the backs of my eyes. They do all these things. Then the actual doctor comes in he's like did anything change within like a couple of days and i was like i'm just on some new medication he asked me the name of it i told him he was like yep 100 percent. that is what's wrong you just need to stop taking it immediately which i had the previous night because i thought that and he was like i have not seen this happen in 25 years but i know that that's what it is which was the most relieving thing other than the fact that he put like these glasses on my face and he was like can you see better now and I was like I can see perfect like how did you do that he's like your eyes are completely swollen I have a picture of my eyes for anyone who wants to see it I do have that um I don't know how much you can tell off of it I don't even know what I'm looking at when I look at that but yeah he said your eyes are completely swollen um the medicine is making them swollen it's pushing everything forward which is making me nearsighted I want to say because I could only see close a day after that 
things kind of started getting better. It was like one eye was a little weird and then the other one was better. And then both of them started getting better and I could see far and then I couldn't see anything close, which scared the crap out of me even more because I was like, what is going on? And then the next morning I woke up and everything was normal. Bless the Lord. So go back to my neurologist, tell her what's going on. You know, she's like, yep, like that makes sense. It, you know, it happens. It happens to 1% of people who take that medication. So of course it would be me. Um, and she said, you know, we're stopping everything. We are not giving you more medication. We are not allowing you to take anything else right now. You need to get everything out of your system. And that is what is going on. Since then, I've been doing better ish. I feel like this is an ongoing story, so I'm so sorry if you're confused. And she was like, I'll see you back here in six weeks, and we will be talking about new things that we can do. I'm gonna be trying Botox, I believe. It's just like, insurance makes it a little difficult because you have to fill two prescription oral medications before they will allow you to do Botox, which is kind of a bummer, but also kind of makes sense because they don't want to give you something if you don't need it. So, you know, I mean, trust the process. It is what it is. Kind of sucks sometimes, but, you know, now we know. And, you know, I had my migraine infusion, I had all these crazy things happen to me, and if I wouldn't have tried, I wouldn't have known. So, now we know. We won't be going that route again. So, a few days later, after, you know, all of these crazy things, and, like, my vision started coming back, you know, I was, like, kind of feeling like, okay, we're good, like, it's gonna be okay. And then, I could not breathe again, my heart was pounding, and I felt like I couldn't swallow. So... I decided to do a walk-in with the same lady who checked my eyes because I really liked her and I thought that like I need somebody that I can trust if I'm going to be honest with and talk about things with. It doesn't matter who you are, you need to have somebody in your life like that and it's really important to have a doctor that you like. If you don't like your doctor, find someone you like because it matters so much. I go back to her, you know, I tell them, they're like, what are you here for? And they have to do the whole screening questions what is symptoms of COVID? Can't breathe, shortness of breath, heart pounding. I had a few sore throats. That's a thing. And they were like, you have COVID. And I was like, how oh, many times is this gonna happen before y'all believe me? I don't have COVID. And again, I 100% understand why they had to do what they did. They had to send me to the COVID clinic. I had to get tested. I have a video of that too. I'll do that, sorry. There you go, very good. Three. They tested me for strep, they tested me okay. for COVID, the got my side. results the same day, and it was negative. So then I was like, okay, I'll go back the next day. And I go back the next day, oh, they wouldn't see me because I had said that it, my symptoms had been persistent for about a week, which is seven days. You can't go back into a clinic unless you've had those symptoms and have been tested for COVID within 10 days. And so I was not able to be seen until the next week because I kind of screwed that up. And, you know, it's fine. I go back, finally able to be seen, tell her what's going on. And she's like, all right, well, we need to recheck your thyroid and we're going to give you a heart monitor, which is what I am wearing right now. It's called a Zio patch. I think you can wear it between like 24 or 48 and 72 hours. Other people wear it up to two weeks. And that is what I'm doing. There is a little button on it that you can push every time that you have a symptom. So every time I feel like my heart's racing or every time I feel like I can't breathe or every time I feel like I can't swallow or every time I feel like somebody is literally sitting or stepping on my chest, I push that little button and I record it. It comes in this little box. There's like this patient log. Also can't show this information, but you get it. And every time that you push a button, you log it. You have a little log. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it because I'm like slightly overexposed, but whatever. Basically, it says, I push the button on, you write the date, you write the time, and then it says, because I felt, and they give you a list of different symptoms, including anxious, arm or neck pain, ting pain or tingling, chest pain or pressure, dizziness, fainted, lightheaded, pounding, fluttering or racing, shortness of breath, skipped beats, or irregular beats and then it gives you a little space to write another if you have something else going on which for me is throat tightness and you know can't swallow and then this lasted for a duration of one minute or less ten minutes or less one hour or less or more than an hour and you check the box and then you describe what you're doing so in this case I was driving the only issue with that <laughs> is they only give you 14 pages, which might seem like a lot to y'all. And like, and that's probably a lot for somebody who only wears it for 24 hours to 72 hours, I don't really know. Um, but in my case, I have probably pushed this thing like 
over 30 times that I'm not even like halfway done wearing it. I have a list in my phone, so it's fine. I've been keeping track otherwise. We're looking for irregular heartbeats. So that is kind of an update on where I am at with everything. I just want to say that anyone who's struggling with their health, it's okay. <laughs> you know, I can tell you that having these migraines have sometimes felt like they've taken over my life and I haven't felt like myself. I have lost motivation to do the things that I love. I don't really want to hang out with anybody because I don't feel great all the time. It's more than a headache, you know, it's body fatigue, it's nauseousness, it's shaky, it's tired, it's irritable mood, it's so many different things that you wouldn't even picture that have to do with a headache. And it's taken me a long time to kind of realize that like there's going to be so many people who don't get it. People have been mad at me because of my migraines. They're like, you need to stop using that as an excuse. And it's like, well, I'm sorry that I can't change how I feel. It's really hard. It's really hard sometimes. And it makes me really anxious. And I think that that's a huge part to all of what's going on. And that's okay. I am somebody who needs to be in control of myself. I am a very, I'm very hard on myself. And I'm a perfectionist, I guess, in some sense. I hate not doing good. I hate not being good. And the fact that, like, I'm not myself, it makes me, like, what's going on? Is it going to be like this forever? And I, like, follow these migraine pages and I see people who are like, I've had a migraine every single day, all day, for like eight years, and I'm like, how can I do that? It's scary to think that that's what people deal with, and it's scary to me thinking that like nothing is gonna work, and that I'm gonna be like this forever. But you can't have that mindset, and you can't go down that route, or it will destroy you. Surround yourself with people who care. Find a doctor that you like. Find someone that you can be honest with. I cannot show my love and support enough for the doctors and nurses who work their butt off every single day trying to help people. It's amazing. It's super inspiring. Finding those people who you feel like you can trust, who you feel like you can confide in, who you feel comfortable talking to and being honest with is so important because this is your health. I just want to, you know, show my support. I am always here for you guys. I know that I don't have a very big following on here and there's probably not a lot of people on here who even watch these videos just because this is more of a documentation for me, but there are some who do come to me or who do DM me or who do message me and ask me like my opinions on things and that's really, really cool that no matter how small this little family on YouTube is that, you know, I can, you know, hopefully help some people or point them in the right direction. And so if you do ever need anything or have questions or if you feel alone, like, I'm here for you. But yeah, I just want you to know that, like, you're so worth it and there's nothing that you're going through that you can't get through. It's gonna get better and it will. And you just have to be in that mindset and there's no reason to feel ashamed of anything that you're going through and it's gonna be okay and that I love you and I hope that you love yourself. I have a lot of other things that I would love to talk about and discuss on here, but I think I'm gonna save that for a different video and maybe I'll, you know, do that when I follow up and hopefully get these results. I have a, a pretty big announcement that somewhat correlates to this video. I cannot, I don't wanna say anything now, just, I, I hate when people do that but it keeps you guessing, okay? I can't, I don't want to say anything now because it's still in the works and it's not official. And as soon as it is official, I will be so excited to talk about it. This is one of the things that's kind of keeping me going and it's making me so excited. It puts the biggest smile on my face when I think about it. I'm so, so, so excited. And ah, I just, oh. Uh... Just like moments like these that you have to remember that are worth living for. I cannot wait until I can share that information with y'all. But until then, I hope that you're having an amazing morning, afternoon, or nighttime. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Bye.